Good morning. How are you? Welcome to uh, Junior Worship. Uh, glad that you are here with us today. Uh, we kind of have an outdoorsy kind of mood. I, I'm really excited that the weather's getting nicer and and they're able to spend a little bit more time outside. That uh, gets me uh, excited. Uh, I don't know about you, if you or your family are into camping or not. Uh, I, When I was younger, I used to, not when I was a kid, but when I was more of an adult, like a young adult, I really loved camping. And so oftentimes when we think about camping, it's like we have this ideal picture of what it's like, right? We're like, oh man, we just drive to where we want to go We just set up things and it'll be lots of fun, right? So, uh, but oftentimes um, when we think about camping, we don't realize uh, just how much work it's involved and uh, sometimes things can go wrong. Maybe, I don't know if you've ever gone camping and if you ever experienced uh, something like this where your tent falls and the rain is coming down and I, I experienced a little bit of that. I went to Maine in October once. So it was pretty cold. It was like fruit close to like 30, 20 to 30 degrees at night and it was raining. It was windy. We were right next to the water. Our tent was about to collapse and we had to move our tent closer inland because it's just too windy. And so there are times where camping just doesn't go quite like we planned. Uh, this hasn't happened to me yet, but uh, I can see how that can happen. So, uh, but anyway, when we think about like just kind of going on a journey or going backpacking, sometimes we have these images in our head, but sometimes it's not that easy, right? So let's watch this video and uh, let's learn from it, okay? So let's go. Aiden, Carlos, and Brian are on a camping trip. They love the outdoors. Hooray! All they need is food, shelter, and a light for when it gets dark. Who brought the food? Not me. Who brought the tent? Not me. Who brought the flashlight? Not me. I'm hungry. I'm cold. I'm frightened. Hey, I think I found a raisin. No, that wasn't a raisin. Maybe they'll plan better next time. Yeah, that's kind of gross. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically, uh, what happened there? Uh, they went camping, they had all these uh, really kind of, you know, ideas of what it's like, and meanwhile, they miscommunicated, they didn't really bring the things that they needed, and consequently, they were they were kind of in trouble, right? They didn't bring the stuff that, that that's needed for a camping trip. And so, uh, yeah, uh, oftentimes life is like that. So today we're going to talk about uh, this story. If you remember last time, it was a f we, we kind of went through a, a short kind of uh, uh, Palm Sunday and Easter message. And so we skipped the last two weeks. But if you remember three weeks ago, we talked about how God delivered the Israelites in a really dramatic fashion, right? Out of Egypt, they were enslaved in Egypt and now uh, parting the Red Sea and they were able to escape. And so God did this amazing thing. And so now they're on this journey. They're on the journey uh, through the wilderness towards a land that God has promised, if you guys remember. And so uh, we'll see in this story how, despite uh, just the challenges of having all these people uh, going from one place to another in the, in the wilderness, that God provided for the physical needs of the people. Okay, so uh, that's the another miracle, right? That God could, is able to provide for that many people who are all camping all at the same time. And so uh, we're going to learn more about this in just a second. So let's uh, let's watch together. Okay. Moses led the people away from the Red Sea, and they came to the wilderness. They could not find good water to drink, and they complained to Moses. God said, if you obey me and do what is right and keep my commands, I will not punish you like I punished the Egyptians. I am Yahweh who heals you. The Israelites came to a place called Elam, where they found plenty of food and water. They camped there. The Israelites left Elam and journeyed into the wilderness. They were hungry. They complained to Moses. We wish we had died in Egypt. At least there was food to eat, they said. You brought us out here to starve to death. But Moses had not brought them out there to die. 
God knew what he was doing. God said, I have heard the complaints of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening you will eat meat, and in the morning you will eat bread until you are full. Then you will know that I am Yahweh your God. So at evening, quail came into the camp. In the morning, fine flakes like frost were on the ground. What is it? The Israelites asked. Moses said, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Israelites called the bread manna, which means, what is it? God gave the people instructions. He told them to collect just enough to eat for the day. If they collected too much, the leftovers went bad. He told them to collect twice as much on the sixth day, because the seventh day was the Sabbath, a day to rest. The Israelites did not always follow God's instructions. Sometimes they collected too much manna, and sometimes they tried to collect manna on the Sabbath day. Moses was angry that the people refused to obey God. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years while they were in the wilderness. The Israelites moved about the wilderness as the Lord told them to do. One day, they came to a camp with no water. Give us something to drink, they told Moses. Why are you complaining to me? Moses asked. You brought us out here to die, the Israelites said. They forgot that the Lord had a plan for them. Lord, what should I do? Moses cried out. God showed Moses a rock and instructed him to hit it with his staff. Water came out of it and the people drank. It was a sign that the Lord was with them. In the New Testament, Jesus said that he is the bread of life. God provided manna from heaven for his people's physical hunger. And later, he provided his son Jesus for our spiritual hunger. The Israelites needed bread to live for a little while, but whoever has Jesus will live forever. All right, well, we are back. So what a, what a powerful story, isn't it, of God just providing when uh, the people couldn't provide for themselves, right? And you guys remember all the different things that, that God provided for them? Uh, God provided manna from heaven. God provided something to drink. And God was always with them uh, through their journey. And of course, the big problem was that uh, people tend to not trust in God, right? Uh, rather than trust that God would provide, they're kind of complaining and like, ah, like I wish I was back in Egypt. And it's pretty amazing to think about how people were in their minds just so uh, kind of distorted. They forgot how terrible things were back in Egypt. And yet here in the wilderness, they're looking back as if those times were fun or those times were good. And so, uh, so really the big test in our journey is to trust God for everything. Uh, to trust God for our physical needs, but also to trust God for our spiritual needs. And I'm reminded of the Lord's Prayer. I, I wonder if you know the Lord's Prayer. Have you ever learned it? Uh, basically, it's our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So that's basically talking about how we should look to God and to remember who he is and to praise him. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven is the second part of the Lord's Prayer. It's basically saying, uh, may... What happens uh, in heaven would happen here on earth that, his, that God's will would be done. And so the whole uh, focus is really to look to God, the one who is making everything better and good. Um, give us this daily, daily bread. So we're supposed to trust in God for everything, right? Including our physical nourishment. Um, and, and so give us our day or daily bread. For, uh, forgive us of our sins. Uh, and, and, f and help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. And so it's talking about the fact that God not only meets our physical needs, but also our spiritual needs, that our sin uh, is taken care of through Jesus, right? And so uh, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. And so the idea here is that we are to try to go about our journey, uh, reminding ourselves uh, that that there's so many different things pulling and tugging at us, and so we're supposed to depend upon God and His power to guide us through. So again, that prayer reminds me of how you know God. If we keep our eyes upon Him, He He we can ask Him for anything, whatever need that we have, whether it be 
spiritual nourishment, whether it be physical nourishment, that we would trust and depend upon God for everything. That we don't look to just ourselves, but we look to a God who made us, a God who redeems us, a God who forgives us, and God who gives us new life. So, um, so I hope that as you go about your week, uh, as you think about whatever you lack, uh, maybe you lack confidence, maybe you lack uh, certain things in, in life, that we could always look to God for everything. And we could always look to God to help us whenever we need it. And we do that by prayer. And so I hope that you can learn the Lord's Prayer. You can personalize it, make it your own. Uh, but my hope is that we can continue to uh, trust in God for everything and, and not complain about, you know, what, what our former life is like, but to believe that God is leading us on a journey and, and that we would uh, go along with whatever he has in store for us. Okay, so thank you for joining us and join me in a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this amazing story uh, of how you are always with us in a journey and how you always provide in our journey, whether it be physical needs, whether it be our sp especially our spiritual needs. And so, Lord, help us to trust you each day, God, to pray to you, to, to be dependent upon you, to believe that you are with us. And Lord, that uh, no matter what would happen in this life, that we would just uh, believe that it's for our good and that you're trying to grow us and you're trying to help us become more like you. So Lord, we uh, submit to you. We thank you for providing our every need, including through Jesus Christ. We give ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Alrighty. Well, thank you for uh, being attentive and we will see you next week and uh, hope that you... Um, are well. Okay. Take care. Bye, everybody.